Einstein's given credit for stuff that he did not take credit for, right? And in here, uh, in other words, he, he was, you got to keep him as a hero, okay? You can't destroy Einstein in, in today's world, you know? And so the issue is, you know, not only is he given credit for stuff that he did not do, but he is given credit for stuff he rejected that he did not believe in, okay? And they do that because a lot of the stuff has been proven to the mathematical establishment. They say, well, you know, how, how are we going to tell people out there that Einstein did not believe in all these things? He did not believe in Big Bang. He did not believe in black holes. He did not believe in singularities. He did not believe in multiverses. He did not believe, you know, in um, a Big Bang. You know, there's a lot of stuff he did not believe in. And they say, well, all this stuff has been proven. What are we going to do with Einstein now? You know, here's this guy sitting in his little desk in Princeton in one corner. And he's a he's a hero to the world. He is his name is synonymous with, you know, genius. And we're we're gonna say that he did not believe in all this stuff. So they had to find a way to say, oh, thanks to Einstein, we have Big Bang, we have black hole, we have singularity, we have you know all this other good stuff. And so this is where where it starts. Okay, uh, here we have a uh, good old Stephen Hawking, and he says the universe must have had a beginning in time. He's talking about the Big Bang. What does he do? He says, in 1970, this was finally proven by Penrose and myself on the basis of what? Einstein's general theory of relativity. So without specifying much more, he's saying, thanks to Einstein, we have this. So Einstein gets the credit, right? Great. And um, the problem is that it would have been nice if he would, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, Hawking would have clarified a little more, you know, that Einstein did not really believe. He does say that in his book, uh, anyways, he says the following. <clears throat> oh, no, this is out of the, um, uh, what is it, the AI, <laughs> the R2-D2 we have online, you know, and it says uh, Einstein did not believe in Big Bang Theory, okay? It clarifies that. I'm not going to read all this, but uh, it says Einstein did not believe in the Big Bang. Okay, he did not believe. Uh, a lot of people out there say that he did believe in it, and they try to, you know, uh, butter him up and say, look, he, he really did believe in it, you know, uh, he wasn't that dumb, you know. No, Einstein did not believe in the Big Bang, okay? So, again, uh, if we're going to take points away from people, dissidents today who don't accept the Big Bang, we got to take those points away from Einstein as well. And this is what he did, uh, Hawking does say in his book. He says, um, when Chandra Sekhar uh, discovered or came up with his equation showing that there was, or there had to be, have been a Big Bang, uh, you know, origin to the universe, Eddington was shocked by that implication, and he refused to believe Chandra Sekhar's result. Uh, Eddington was Chandra Sekhar's boss, right? <clears throat> so that was important. He kind of <clears throat> put Chandra Sekhar down. But Ed Eddington thought it was simply not possible that a star could collapse to, what? A point, you know, a little dot, singularity, right? And says, Einstein himself wrote a paper in which he claimed that stars would not shrink to zero size. Einstein did not believe in zero size objects, okay? And uh, so he did not believe in the Big Bang. He did not believe in this nonsense called the singularity today. And here he states it in one of his books. He says the essential, res uh, sorry, this is from a uh, paper. The, the essential result of this investigation is a clear understanding as to why the Schwarzschild singularities do not exist in physical reality. And he goes out there telling us why they don't. And essentially he's saying, in real life, singularities do not exist. Period. We're done. You know, so don't, don't say that Einstein, uh, you know, thanks to Einstein, we have the singularity, we have Big Bang, we have black holes. No, he did not believe in any, all, all, any of that stuff. And here's the black hole, okay, again, uh, he wrote a paper on that. Einstein denied several times that black holes could form, and, he, and this is what he wrote in one of his papers. The essential result of this investigation is a clear understanding as to why the Schwarzschild singularities do not exist in physical reality. And he goes out there talking about the singularity. Again, he says he did not believe in all this stuff. He essentially proved it with his paper by... Uh, you know, doing it mathematically or giving, I guess, his opinion, you know. Uh, so, you know, he, he did not accept this notion that things could collapse to a singularity, whether it was a Big Bang or a star or whatever. He just didn't accept that. 
And today they say well, they've proven Big Bang, they've proven black holes. It's you know part of the everyday talk in uh, uh, mathematical physics. Um, you know, all papers that are being written, hundreds of papers that are being written every year, thousands, uh, talking about Big Bang, singularities, and black holes, and dark matter, all that stuff. I said I didn't accept any of that stuff. Dark matter came later, but I mean, he wouldn't have accepted that either. For sure, he did not accept um, the so-called Einstein-Rosen bridge, which is the wormhole, right? Uh, again, because the wormhole is a one-dimensional tunnel bridge between two universes, you know. So they played around with the math, but Einstein was careful to say, you know, don't bring that into the real world. And so again, what are these people doing all that math for people like Einstein if it has nothing to do with the real world? You know, <laughs> again, uh, I have a problem with uh, Einstein um, doing math for stuff that does not exist. You know, what's next? Uh, Alice in Wonderland, you're going to measure the size of Wonderland, get an equation on that. Okay, um, he's uh, primarily famous for this, for saying that, you know, uh, giving a physical interpretation to gravity, which is... You know, we have the bending of what? Of number lines, okay? And that's what those lines are there. They're number lines. They turn them into this uh, canvas, this uh, fishnet, I guess you could say, right? They turn them into this ridiculous thing that they feed the public and they say, look, this is gravity. This is the reason, this is the physical cause of gravity, the mechanism. Okay, what's the problem with this? Well, we have a problem with it because of this, and here it is, it doesn't apply to a three-body system. Okay, you have um, the Earth uh, uh, and the Moon system with the Sun, and the uh, Moon goes around the Earth, and therefore every now and then causes eclipses. Okay, we all understand that pretty much. And so if the Sun weighs the canvas downwards, the Earth weighs it downwards, all both in the same direction, and the Moon travels around the Earth. Everybody understands that. It's very clear. But that's not what happens with uh, either uh, Uranus or with um, um, Pluto. Uh, here you have the uranus Oberon um, system. And uh, the sun weighs the canvas downwards. So does allegedly Uranus. But what happens to Oberon? Well, it, it doesn't move like you would think, like the moon does around the Earth. It moves over the poles, you could say. You know, it's... Um, uh, you could say a north-south direction with respect to the sun. And when you look at uh, the Charon and Pluto system, uh, if uh, sun weighs the canvas downwards and Pluto weighs it downwards, why does Charon, you know, form a bullseye pattern as seen from the sun? The uh, Pluto would have to bend, uh, bend space-time outwards in that case. So again, Einstein's physical interpretation cannot be applied to a three-body system. Okay, and so again, it's got nothing to do with physics. It doesn't have anything to do with reality. It's just a mathematical nonsense. That's all it is. <clears throat> okay, so here we have um, Einstein supposedly destroyed the ether, and just in case Einstein, you know, wrote a paper. Uh, he had, since he gave a, a discussion, a, a talk at the University of Leiden. And it says, we may say that according to general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, there exists an ether. There exists an ether. Einstein believed in the ether. He did not, re he did not destroy the ether. He believed in it. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. Okay? Now, uh, that's not totally true. Okay, let's make sure we understand. I'll be talking about that next week, so I'm not going to go into much detail today. But Einstein's ether was not the same as Lorentz ether. Okay, so those ethers were not the same. They were different notions. And it goes back to what I've been saying already for weeks and months. And that is that nobody has defined the word ether. Nobody has any idea what the ether is. And they have different notions of what the ether is. That's the case here. Einstein had a different notion of what the ether is or gave it different properties than the properties that Lorentz gave his ether or the ones that exist, that uh, had, they had in the 19th century. In fact, Lorentz has a different ether than people before him. So they all had different ethers. And even today, you have all these people who say, oh, the ether, they, you know, they still vouch for the ether. Why? Because nobody tell, can tell you what the ether is. And that's the whole problem. 
they all have different ethos. <clears throat> and I'll be talking about that, I think, next week. Uh, meanwhile, let's continue here. I need not believe in gravitational waves. Around 1936, Einstein wrote to his close friend Max Born, telling him that, together with Nathan Rosen, he had arrived at the interesting result that gravitational waves did not exist. Okay. Now, it turns out that Einstein really wrote, like, three papers. He wrote a first one. He submitted to the physical review there in 1936. It was rejected by the physical review, and I said never again wanted to publish at the physical review, partly because the guy who rejected it, one of the guys who rejected it, one of the um, um, referees, uh, was a worker uh, that worked with him at Princeton. <laughs> Uh, so-called physicists, you know, mathematical physicists who rejected his paper. He didn't want to publish it again at the Physical Review. And so instead, he published it the following year at the, with some modifications, the Journal of the Franklin Institute. And uh, there he said, well, yeah, gravitational waves do exist, actually. And then he finally wrote another paper in 1938 after revising his revision, and he again went back and said, no, gravitational waves do not exist. <laughs> So that's how he died. He died saying that gravitational waves do not exist. And what people try to do is they uh, focus on his 1936 paper and say he, uh, or in 37, the one he published, saying, well, see, he, here, here he changed his mind. So he, he did believe in gravitational waves. No, no, the last one, the 1938, he said, no, there are no uh, gravitational waves. His buddy uh, Rosen, uh, Nathan Rosen, he continued with that line of thought all the way beyond uh, Einstein's uh, death. So, um, no, uh, Einstein died not believing in um, gravitational waves. And uh, so here's a fellow who, um, uh, well, uh, this is just a summary here of, um, of uh, how we're going to, uh, you know, of Einstein essentially today of his uh, biography. Uh, he's given credit for quantum mechanics when he did not believe in it, okay? Um, uh, you know, he, he never accepted quantum mechanics, specifically the Copenhagen interpretation. He never accepted big bang black holes. Essentially, he did not like this notion of the singularity, which led to infinities, right? Uh, things getting closer and closer and closer together, never really touching each other. Uh, he didn't accept wormholes, even though he came up with a einstein rosen bridge. He didn't say, he, he did not think that wormholes existed in reality. And a lot of people out there talk about, among them Hawking, Stephen Hawking, he talked about traveling through wormholes to another universe, right? Einstein said, this is nonsense. Um, uh, he, he did believe that the ether exists. In other words, he did not believe in the inexistent ether. He believed in the ether, right? And uh, he did not accept the entanglement, you know, the action at a distance. Um, in EPR, the, uh, the einstein podolsky rosen uh, 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 experiment that he devised with these other two fellows. So he did not believe in action at a distance. He tried to figure out why does the universe work that way. He didn't think it worked in a magical way, uh, which is what Niels Bohr, Heisenberg, all these people believed in. Uh, and today he's given credit for all this stuff that he actually did not concoct. Length contraction, time dilation, mass increase, they came from other people who already preceded him. He was a baby, you know, kid, 10-year-old uh, when all these people came up with all this stuff. And he's given credit for stuff that he could not explain, like the principle of equivalence. Why? You know, don't tell me that uh, gravity is similar to acceleration. Tell me why. <laughs> What's the cause? What's the physical cause? Energy equals mass. Uh, again, no idea whatsoever because no, we have no definitions of energy or mass that we can sink our teeth into. That's one issue. The other one is the two are concepts. To say that love is equal to intelligence times the velocity of a light square. I mean, what does that tell me? You know, what nonsense is that? That, that concerns math. It doesn't concern physics. And then uh, the, the only thing he's really famous for is this warp uh, number lines, you know, gravity, which is a ridiculous or irrational explanation for gravity. No, no, if, 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 um, if the Earth doesn't fly out of the solar system, it's not because number lines are warped, okay? And so, uh, you know, what is uh, the legacy from Einstein? Well, I can tell you he made no contributions whatsoever to science, and this notion that he should be, you know, that his name should be equated with genius or intelligence 
is way overblown. You know, he he contributed absolutely nothing to science. It just uh, spun the wheels of all the mathematicians out there, which later on rejected him because he rejected a lot of stuff that today they believe has been proven. And they would like their, you know, their number one pastor, their bishop, their pope, to really believe in, in, the, in all this stuff. But Einstein died without believing in any of it. He didn't believe in black holes and uh, Big Bang. He didn't even have accepted alternative realities, you know, parallel universes, multiverses. He would have rejected all that. And whatever he, he still was alive to hear, he would have rejected all this stuff that came later. He would have rejected dark matter for sure. You know, and uh, and again, he died in atheism in his, own, in his own religion, the one he created. And people have a problem with that, so they don't tell the public all this stuff. You know, this is kept from the public. It's kept by omission, not because they deliberately go against it, even though some do and say, no, he actually believed in Big Bang. He actually did believe in black holes. You know, they'll try to argue that. But primarily it's from omission. They simply do not mention the subject and instead do the opposite. Every time they write a paper on uh, gravitational waves, on uh, Big Bang, on uh, black holes, they always credit Einstein. You have to read, uh, uh, you know, uh, give homage to the man who created it all.